Hello, hope you are doing well. Today I am going to take up a story from NCERT's supplementary reader for class 10. The title of the supplementary reader is Footprints Without Feet and the title of the story is Bully. This is chapter 9. In our previous session, we had discussed about the first part of the story. Today I will take up the second part. Now before I begin with today's session, I take up the second part of the story. I am going to ask you a few comprehension questions from the previous session. To recapitulate, are you ready? My first question is, does Bhuli enjoy her first day at school? Have you noted down the answer in your notebooks? I am sure you must have. Bholi was afraid at first. Yes, of course, we all know that. She had many apprehensions. She even wept when her teacher asked her the name. She sat in a corner and watched everyone. She did not talk to anyone. Soon, the beautiful pictures on the classroom wall attracted her attention. When she saw that there were many other girls, she began hoping that they would become her friends too. The gentle, kind and loving manner of her teacher made her comfortable. She grew hopeful and began looking forward to her new life by the time the first day ended. Thus, although initially she did not enjoy it, but by the time she went home, she had liked her school. Okay, and the next question is, does she find her teacher different from the people at home? Though we are not told directly, but let us see. Boli had been a neglected child at home. She was never bathed, nor her clothes washed. She was criticized and everyone made fun of her, but she found her teacher to be entirely different. Her teacher did not make fun of her ugliness and her stammering. Rather, she encouraged her tenderly. Her affection deeply touched Bhuli's heart. So, this was in the first part. Let's begin with this part now. Open your books on page 58. I am going to discuss this part with you. The years passed. The village became a small town. Naturally, every village grows. The little primary school became a high school. Isn't it good for her bully? Otherwise, you know, her father would not have sent her to the city to complete her education. There were now a cinema under a tin shed and a cotton ginning mill. The mail train began to stop at the railway station. One night after dinner, uh, Ramlal told his wife that he was going to accept Bishambar's proposal for their daughter, Bholi. His wife said, Bholi will be lucky to get such a well-to-do bridegroom, a big shop, a house of his own, and I hear several thousand in his bank. Moreover, he is not asking for a dowry. That's right. But he is not so young, you know. You see, till now when we are being told that he has lots of money, uh, he is ready to marry Bholi, we feel things are all right. But now we will come to know that the things are not all right. He is not so young, almost the same age I am. That's what his father is telling. And he also limps. Moreover, the children from his first wife are quite grown up. So what does it matter? The wife replied, 45 or 50. It is no great age for a man. We are lucky that he is from another village and does not know about her pockmarks and her lack of sense. If I don't accept this proposal, she may remain unmarried all her life. Yes, but I wonder what Bhuli will say. They are not concerned about Bholi's wishes. 
and they still think she's dumb. She has been going to school and she has studied and they are getting her married off to a man twice her age. This is sad, this is unfortunate. Let us see what happens then. What will the witless one say? She is like a dumb cow. You see, as I told you in my last session that the title of the story was The Dumb Cow. But here it has been changed to Bhuli. But there are references, you know, where they are calling her a dumb cow, which is certainly not right. We should not give names to anybody. This is wrong. And then the father, Ramlal, says, maybe you are right, she would not know and we'll get her married off to this man and that is the end of the story. But in the other corner of the courtyard, Bholi lay awake on her cot listening to her parents' whispered conversation. Now finally, the marriage day has arrived. She didn't say no. She didn't probably had the courage or she wanted her parents to be happy. Bishambarnath was a well-to-do grocer. He came with a big party of friends and relations with him for the wedding. A brass band playing a popular tune from an Indian film headed the procession with the bridegroom riding a decorated horse. Ramlal was overjoyed to see such pomp and splendor. He had never dreamt that his fourth daughter would have such a grand wedding. Is it a grand wedding, do you think? What is your opinion? Note it down. You can share your opinion with us, with your teacher and with your friends. Right? And that is how, you know, we come to a consensus on concerns, social concerns, that this is not the right thing. Bholi's elder sisters who had come for the occasion were envious of her luck when the auspicious moment came the priest said bring the bride. Bholi clad in a red silken bridal dress was led to the bride's place near the sacred fire. Garl and the bride, one of his friends prompted Bishambarnath. The bride lifted the garland of yellow marigolds a woman slipped back the silken veil from the bride's face. Bishamba took a quick glance. The garland remained poised in his hands. The bride slowly pulled down the veil over her face. What's the reason? He has seen her pockmarks. Bishamba said to the friend next to him that she has pockmarks on her face. So what? You are also not young. Maybe. But if I am to marry her, her father must give me 5,000 rupees. Now the bargain begins. She is not beautiful. Now you give 5,000 rupees. Ramlal told Bishambarnath not to ask for 5,000 rupees. He requested him to take 2,000 rupees instead. But Bishambarnath was adamant. He said, you have to give me 5,000 rupees or else I will go back. Ramlal pleaded with him that you should not go back otherwise everybody in the village will make fun of him and he will not be able to show his face to anyone in the village. On this Bishambarnath said then it is 5000 rupees. Tears streaming down his face Ramlal went in, opened the safe and counted out the notes. He placed the bundle at the bridegroom's feet, on Bishambar's greedy face appeared a triumphant smile. He had gambled and he has won. Give me the garland, he announced. Once again, the veil was slipped back from the bride's face. Who did it? But this time, she did it. Boli herself did it. Her eyes were not downcast. She was looking up looking straight at her prospective husband and in her eyes there was neither anger nor hate, only cold contempt. Bishambar raised the garland to place it around the bride's neck but before he could do so, 
Boli's hand struck out like a streak of lightning and the garland was flung into the fire. She got up and threw away the veil. Pitaji said Bholi in a clear loud voice and her father, mother, sisters, brothers, relations and neighbours were startled to hear her speak without even the slightest tremor. That means they were not paying any attention towards Bholi. That you know the stammering was gone long back. Let's continue. Pitaji, take back your money. I am not going to marry this man. Ramlal was thunderstruck. Have some regard for our izzat. For the sake of your izzat, said Bully, I was willing to marry this lame old man, but I will not have such a mean, greedy, and contemptible coward as my husband. I want. I want, I want. We all thought she was a harmless dumb cow. Boli turned violently towards the old woman. Yes, auntie, you are right. You all thought I was a dumb driven cow. That's why you wanted to hand me over to this heartless creature. But now the dumb cow, the stammering fool is speaking. Do you want to hear more? Bishambarnath the grocer started to go back with his party. The confused bandsmen thought this was the end of the ceremony and struck up a closing song. Ramlal stood rooted to the ground, his head bowed low with the weight of grief and shame. The flames of the sacred fire slowly died down. Everyone was gone. Ramlal turned to Bhuli and said, What about you? No one will ever marry you now. What shall we do with you. And Sulekha said in a voice. Underline the word Sulekha. Remember in the first episode I had asked you to underline the word Sulekha. We were introduced to Sulekha in the beginning of the story. And now at the end of the story once again we are being introduced to Sulekha. Why Sulekha? She is beginning a new chapter in her life. She is going to write her own fate. And Sulekha said in a voice that was calm and steady, Don't you worry, Pitaji. In your old age, I will serve you and mother and I will teach in the same school where I learned so much. Isn't that right, ma'am? The teacher had all along stood in a corner watching the drama. Yes, Bhuli, of course, she replied. And in her smiling eyes was the light of a deep satisfaction that an artist feels when contemplating the completion of her masterpiece. Underline these words. See, A.K. Abbas was an artist himself. He was a writer. But he was associated with the film world, art world. And that is the feeling he must have got when he concluded the story, a masterpiece. With this, we have come to the end of the story. And now we will discuss a few questions. My first question is, why do Bholi's parents accept Bishambar's marriage proposal? Note down your points. Their reasons were very insignificant, I would say. Bholi's parents accepted Bishambar's marriage proposal as he was a well-to-do grocer and had not asked for any dowry. They also believed that Bholi was too pockmarked and simple-minded so that she would not get a suitable match anyway. So that is no reason to get the girl married off to a person. This is the wrong reason actually, right? Next question, why does the marriage not take place? Bhuli first agreed to the unequal match. Yes, it was un an unequal match. He was 45 or 50 years old and Bhuli was just, I think, 20 or 18 years old. But during the wedding, Bishambar asked for a dowry of 5,000 rupees because he saw Bhuli's pokemarked face. Ramlal was forced to pay Bishambar money because he had stalled the wedding, but Bholi refused to marry the greedy man. 
she asserted her rights and dignity. Thus the marriage party was turned away. Let us discuss a few more questions now. Now these are global questions, right? Bholi had many apprehensions about going to school. What made her feel that she was going to a better place than her? You see, this description is not given in the text. We have to infer. Why does she feel that way? The day she had to go to school, her parents were forced to dress her nicely. That's the first thing. She was bathed and her hair was properly done. Until then, she was not being taken care of. The special treatment she received made her feel that she was going to a better place. Next question. How did Bholi's teacher play an important role in changing the course of her life? Her teacher did play an important role, yes. Right from the beginning, from stammering to confidence. Bholi stammered and was an underconfident child for various reasons. We know the reasons. We need not, you know, repeat one after the other. You know them all. You can write. Her teacher treated her kindly and encouraged her to have confidence and be bold. She taught her to read and write and made her an independent girl who was aware of her rights. Thus, she changed her life. My next question is, why did Bholi at first agree to an unequal match? Why did she later reject the marriage? What does this tell us about her? Bholi agreed to the match at first in order to fulfill her parents' wishes. Later on, she rejected the marriage when the bridegroom asked for dowry. She couldn't stand that. This tells us that Bholi was not a timid or a dumb girl. She was aware of her rights. She also knew how to fight for her own dignity and feared no one. And that is what is required for all of us, for all the girls. Next question, Bholi's real name is Sulekha. We are told this right at the beginning, but only in the last but one paragraph of the story is Bholi called Sulekha again. Why do you think she is called Sulekha at that point in the story? The word Bholi means a naive or a simpleton. But by the end, she grew confident and stood up for her rights. This indicates that she was going to start a new chapter in her life. She is going to write her own destiny, Suleika. After her education, Bholi had ha really transformed into Suleika. And her assertion at the time of her marriage is her announcement to the world that she is no more a Bholi, but she is Suleika. The word Sulekha stands for being a literate, intelligent and mature individual in the story. Now some more global questions for you. Bholi's teacher helped her overcome social barriers by encouraging and motivating her. How do you think you can contribute towards changing the social attitudes illustrated in the story? I think we all can contribute in our own ways. We must not discriminate between different genders. All should be given equal rights and opportunities to grow, to study, to work. We must also learn to respect those who are differently abled and we should treat them at pa. Right? Next question. Should girls be aware of their rights and assert themselves? Should girls and boys have the same rights, duties and privileges? What are some of the ways in which society treats them differently? When we speak of human rights, do we differentiate between girls' rights and boys' rights? No, we certainly don't do that. All are equal in the eyes of law, but society treats them differently. And we need to check that. We have observed that parents spend more on a boy's education than that of a girl. Though things are changing now, awareness is coming, 
right but a lot more needs to be done therefore you know government of india is still having posters like this beti bachao beti padhao educate the girl child therefore you know they wanted to bring this awareness among everyone a girl is just trained to be a wife and mother boys have special privileges in matters of food also career and freedom uh, but things are changing though gradually girls must be aware of their rights to exercise them they must utilize their education to preserve their self reliance and dignity they must be ready to demand their due and even fight for it if the need arises now the next question are you ready why does the teacher have a smile of deep satisfaction on her face at the end of the story bhuli teacher is very happy why is she happy she did not say anything she was happy that education has shown its results education has given confidence to sulekha let us find some solutions i am giving you a question you have to think and give me the solutions write it share it with your teacher with your friends and you can share it with us also we would love to receive it now my a question to you is bhuli story must have moved you i am sure do you think girl child is not treated at par with the boys what can we do to address this ask all your family members to contribute a suggestion hmm you can then share these ideas with your classmates ask all family members okay you can even ask your relatives your neighbors collect all the views and then you will have a chunk ready with you to be shared and when everybody will do this task you will have a resource ready with you and with that resource you can make a poster so we come to poster making now you must be aware that the government of india has introduced a scheme to save the girl child the scheme is called beti bachao beti padhao save the girl child read about the scheme go to that site and read it and design a poster in groups of 4 informing people in your community about it display them on the school notice board when you get the opportunity right so there are two tasks for you and they are all related first you have to find a solution once that is ready with you design a poster and then you once the poster has been done we come to the next task that is writing identify any one person in your family or neighborhood a woman or girl who has inspired you with their choices or touched you with their kindness write a short biographical note about them including their place of birth age traits and the incident that influenced you you can keep the note between 200 to 200 250 words you've done this we move on to book review now some other literary pieces that showcase inspiring individual journeys include the brass gong by kazi abdul sattar old man at the bridge by ernest hemingway gandhi ji the teacher by raj kumari amritkar read any one of these and write a review about the story its characters the choice of language and the impact on readers so there are two writing tasks and they are all connected and as you know supplementary reader is meant to be read and enjoyed with this we have come to the end of this session enjoy reading enjoy doing your book review thank you